The next step in designing my drill jig is design a pin which will go into these holes to properly align this hole in the drill jig. So I need to make this indexing pin. And in this video I want to discuss some things about the indexing pin. Obviously we need to consider its length. Its diameter will be the half inch hole. And we'll come back later and look at specific diameters in another video. But for now I'm going to use the evaluate tab and I'm going to measure a few things. Because I know the minimum length of the pin has to be from here to into this part. And let's just see what the length would need to be if it went back all the way through this hole to this face. So in this case, we're looking at an inch and a half. So I need to make a half inch round pin about an inch and a half longer or longer. So now that I know that, i go ahead and I'm gonna make my pin and I'll bring it into the assembly. Now that I've made my indexing pin, I'm gonna go to the assembly tab, go insert components, so I have it open here. I'll just click and I'll drag it in. And then I'm going to add the basic meets that I want. So I'll select this diameter, hold control, select this, release, and add that concentric meet. I can go ahead and lock rotation, but I won't because the planes might become important later. So for now, I just have this pin, and I probably want to do a limit distance meet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll do that. So I'll select this face, rotate around, hold control, select this face. Whoops, we'll try that again. I didn't get what I wanted. I'll select this face. Rotate around, hold control, select this face, release control, and tell it I want to make a limit distance. And the minimum distance is going to be zero. And the maximum distance, well, I made the pin the inch and a half long. There's a quarter inch gap here, so I want the pin all the way retracted so I can get this part out with ease, meaning the maximum distance should be one inch. I'll say OK, and then I'll double check it. So I can pull it up to there and I can push it into there. So that's working. There's my rough indexing pin that we'll examine in greater detail later. Go back to the isometric view. I'm going to rebuild and I'm going to save that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a base plate down here. So I'm going to come up to the insert components drop down arrow, select new part, click to create it, right click on it and again I'm going to rename it. I'm just going to call it the base plate. Then I'm going to go ahead, select it, and start editing the part. I'm going to rotate around. I want it here. I want to make boss extrude. will look normal too. Again, if you don't like the normal too, flip it. Doesn't matter which side you work from. I'm just going to zoom out a bit, click in white space, and I want a two point rectangle. So I'm just going to click somewhere out here move over, make my rectangle. Now I would like it size controlled by the other part sizes. So I'm going to select this edge, hold control, select this edge, and I'll make them collinear. I'll do the same thing here. And once again, I want to stress, I have no idea really how big I want this base plate to be yet. I will alter it as I go. So I probably would like it a little bit past here. So for now, I'll select that. And I'll select this, and I'm just going to make them collinear. Very well might change all of this later. And then again here, I don't know how far I would like it. So I'm going to make this a standard size. I'll use my mouse gestures, activate smart dimensioning. And it's roughly 6 and 7 eighths, which isn't bad. I'm going to bump it down to 6 and a half for now. I'll look at this isometrically. I'll exit my sketch. And its thickness, I'm going to try three quarters. Again, all this is just, we'll see. For now, it's fine. I've made that base plate. I'm going to stop editing my part. There's my rough jig. And now, in the next videos, we're going to look at what we really need to do to make it a truly functional jig. Check out if it works. You'll notice I haven't added any holes for fasteners and dowels. I don't want to do that until I'm pretty certain that not much will change about it. So it'll be one of the last things I do.